welcome to the Up and Coming, and I'm your host, CJ. Uh, we have with us today a phenomenal uh, evangelist. I want you uh, and your family to tune in. If you have a loved one that you, it seems as if there's no hope, you don't want to miss this episode. When I think of her, I think of no weapon formed against her shall prosper. I mean, she's come out of pain. She's come overcome many obstacles. And I also think about, you know, Jeremiah 29 and 11. Uh, but the Lord says, for I know the thoughts I have for you, declares the Lord of hosts. He says his plans is to prosper you and not to harm you and to give you an expected hope and a future. So you do not want to miss this episode. This will give you hope and it is the, let uh, change your outcome for the future and how you look at what you're going through and who's going through what because you don't want to give up on your loved ones and this book will give you hope you uh this book she has written this book and uh teresa she's a phenomenal writer this lady like i said she wears many hats and she's an author she's a executive producer her book is entitled heartbroken now healed and delivered and uh, this is her book, and we will give you the contact information uh, following the broadcast in the event you would like to uh, purchase her book or purchase a, a DVD. She also has a stage play. Order these these items for your loved ones that's dealing with you know any type of addiction. And, uh, also, uh, the book talks about her life story. And she also has a radio talk show. So I want to introduce you all to uh, Teresa Tarpley, evangelist Teresa Tarpley. Welcome, Teresa. Hi, everybody. How you doing? And thank you so much for having me on your show today. Thank you for coming. You're so welcome. Thank you. I just want to, you know, uh, get into, you know, your your uh, your book. You know, I mean, I read this book, you all, in one day. Can you tell me about um, when CPS had gotten involved into your life? When CPS got involved in my life, it was, it was scary at first, but then now that I think about it, it was a tool. God allowed them to come into my life. It was a tool when I did decide to get clean from crack. I yes. knew which way to go, which yes. road to walk down. Oh, she also uh, has an award. She won the Church Star Awards uh, for the producer of the year. Congratulations, Thank Teresa. You so much. Tell us uh, about your book. What inspired you to write the book? Um, the name of my book is Heartbroken, Now Healed and Delivered. And um, I didn't ever think that I was going to be an author. I remember being at work one night on 11 and 7 shift, the night shift, and God just started speaking to me about journaling. Yes. And I didn't know a lot of my family on my dad's side and pretty much on my mom's side as well. And I was introduced to one of my cousins on my mom's side, and she's an author of three books. So she uh -huh. kind of encouraged me to write, to continue to write. And the more she encouraged me, the more I continued to write. And then I was introduced to my publisher. And once I got introduced to my publisher, then we went forth from there. And I just didn't think the journaling would lead to me writing a book and it would end up being national for me telling my story. Wow. So um, when you, uh, what was um, therapeutic for you in um, getting this book out, you know? So how did you uh, end up um, getting the book out? and it's selling, doing well? Well, yes, it's doing real well. I mean, a lot of times people always be like, well, how much is you getting money out of me? I don't have a problem sometimes with sharing my story, you know, yes. and just blessing people with it because you don't know what your story can do to inspire, to, if they can look at me like, oh, she came out of this, then I know I can overcome this. So, you yes. know, it's just inspiring to other people. Yes. So, and I just thank God for that because I never thought that I would be an author, especially I've always been told I was going to never be nothing, we're going to never mount to nothing, I'm going to be just like my daddy, or mm -hmm. she ain't going to be nothing, or once a dope fiend, always a dope fiend, you know, and yes. it was really good therapy for me, just writing and getting stuff out, it was so much stuff that I hid for yes. so many years, even after coming, even after coming out for drugs, I used drugs covered up 
and numbed everything. You know, a lot of my pain, a lot of my depression. But when I began to journal and write, then things start coming back up. And the more I released it in writing, the more healing okay. took wow. place. Yes. So tell us how you got addicted to drugs. I was a young girl lying about my age, trying to fit in. Mm -hmm. And I would always hear grown people say, well, how they were smoking crack and, you know, and mm -hmm. I would try it. I would always say, well, I know how to do it. Or, you know, mm -hmm. it was different things. I told them what I knew how to do, but I actually didn't know how to do it. So mm -hmm. I started, it started leading to once a month, then once a month led to every other week, every other week led to once a week, and once a week led to every day. And mm -hmm. Before the crack, there was weed, there was popping pills, there was snorting cocaine. Mm -hmm. I tried to snort heroin, but I didn't like the way heroin made me feel. But when mm -hmm. I got on that crack, yes. it took away everything. I mean, it wow. was real addictive, and I did anything. When I say anything to get mm -hmm. my dope, I did anything to get it. I don't care. Mm -hmm. If uh, my baby didn't have diapers, I would call my mom. I say, Mom, I need some diapers for my baby. And she might bring me some and take them out the pack to where I couldn't go and refund, get a refund at the store. I would still find somebody to sell them too. I didn't care if I got two or three dollars for them. I did yes. just that. If I would go to Wick and get milk for my baby, I would take the milk, sell the milk just to get me some dope. Mm -hmm. Food stamps, took the food stamps, sold them just to get me some dope. Whatever it took to get me to get high. I did just that. It didn't matter yes. what it was. Yes. So how was it like to have a baby that was addicted to crack? <sighs> it was painful at first. You know, mm -hmm. I really didn't feel nothing, you know, because I was I was addicted to it. So yes. but after coming off of it, you know, I grew up I always saying what goes on in this house stays in this house and I always tried to just keep it covered up, just yes. sweep it up under the rug. But mm -hmm. after just writing and getting it out there, it made me feel ashamed. It mm -hmm. had me embarrassed or wondering how my child was gonna feel about me. Mm -hmm. You know, and it was so many things that my parents never told me about nothing. But mm -hmm. I didn't want to be like my parents. I wanted to do what they didn't do. I wanted to let my child know what I did. Mm -hmm. And and I asked him to forgive me. And he forgave me and he don't hold animosity toward me. You know, CPS mm -hmm. said he was going to be um, retarded. He was going to be malnutritious. He was mm -hmm. going to have a mental problem. There's nothing wrong with my child. He's 27 years old now. Wow. And he took his GED test at the age of 16. He passed mm -hmm. with flying colors, and he's fine. There's nothing wow. wrong with him. And the key to it is, mm -hmm. after he forgave me, or, yeah, after he forgave me, yes. I had to learn how to forgive me for what I done wrong. Yes. Mm -hmm. Wow. So uh, I know you said you did anything. So tell us more about, um, like, uh, getting uh, uh, how you were locked in a car. Ooh, when I was on drugs, yes. When I was on drugs, um, you know, when the drugs is, I had been up for like three or four days, haven't eaten, haven't slept, mm -hmm. and didn't want to go home and hear my mom's mouth about my children. Mm -hmm. And um, so I was sitting on this nightclub, on the steps on the nightclub, and I said, well, I might as well go home and face the music. So after that was over with, this. Um, Man, he, he was on a pay phone, and he said, um, say, you want to get high? I said, yeah. See, I trusted him. Yes. And I didn't used to believe in God. Let me go back. I didn't believe in God because mm -hmm. I feel like if God was real, why did you let my brother get murdered behind weed papers? Mm -hmm. Why did you let my mom go through domestic violence? Why would every time I pray, say, God, take me off for dope, I was still on dope? Why every time I pray, it seemed mm -hmm. like prayer didn't work? Yes. But see, when that man told me, he said, we're going to get in the car. See, I trusted him, but I didn't mm -hmm. trust God. Yes. He took me to this house behind a funeral home, like in a, across the street from my dad's mechanic shop. Yes. He, before he took me there, he went and picked up his friend. They took me to that house, mm -hmm. and they performed anal sex on me, dared me not to get any bad movement on me. If I did, they mm -hmm. beat me up, made me suck it off, whatever. Yes. And so then, after all the drugs was gone, they was like, um, 
you still want to get high? I said, no, I just want to go home to my kids. I was scared. Mm -hmm. I was really fearful. Mm -hmm. And so after all the drugs was gone, I mean, um, after um, I was in a trunk, and I didn't trust God, but I was in the trunk praying, asking God not to let them kill me. And they cussed me out, told me I better not say nothing, better not tell nobody nothing that happened. So then eventually they popped the trunk, and they told me I better not look at the license plate, better not tell nobody nothing. Mm -hmm. So then I found myself um, on the main road. They dumped me out in a dark alley, and I got to the main road. And once I got to the main road, this other guy, he pulled up. He said, say, ma'am, you want to get high? I said, no. He said, you want to ride? And I said, no, I don't want to ride. I'm looking over my shoulders. I'm scared. Mm -hmm. So then he came back. He said, ma'am, you sure you're OK? And so he said, you sure you don't want to ride? And I ended up getting in a car with the man. Mm -hmm. I trusted him, but I didn't trust God. Mm -hmm. And I told him what happened. He didn't care. He just wanted to give me a few dollars for some sex. Mm -hmm. I wanted that pain to be numb. Yes. I wanted all that to be gone. So then next thing you know, he ended up taking me to the dope house. I get to the dope house. I told him what happened. They didn't care. They just want to get, they just want to smoke my dope. Mm -hmm. After all the dope was gone, I ended up taking off walking. And once I took off walking, another man pulled up and asked me if I wanted to date. And I was like, yeah. To, and when you're in the streets, you hear some of the weirdest things. Because people always say, well, it ain't right if mm -hmm. You wasn't doing this and doing that. This wouldn't have happened to you, so you did it to yourself. This man took me to a park. He took advantage of me. He left me there in a the park. All that happened in one night. So wow. I just want to let any and everybody know, I don't care whatever is going on. Mm -hmm. God is the still the same God today mm -hmm. as he was yesterday and forevermore. He's a miracle worker. I'm still standing. I've been clean from crack September 19, made 25 years. I have not smoked crack, have yes. not did anything, you know, to get back yes. out there or mm -hmm. nothing. And I'm still standing. Wow, that's awesome. A walking miracle. Wow. So who was, you know, some of the people that prayed for you and you know, during the time you were going through? There was a lady, she used to live down the street from my mom, and every time she would see me, she'd be like, can I pray for you? I'd be like, oh, Lord, here she come. I used to try to dodge it everywhere <laughs> I went. And I remember one day, she gave me a green prayer cloth, and yeah. she said, baby, just keep that on you. She mm -hmm. said, just put it on you. I'm like, okay. Get to the dope house. I'm sitting up there trying to really enjoy my high. I could not enjoy my high. Mm -hmm. I was like, just like, skissing out real bad. I'm like, oh my God, just scared. Mm -hmm. And didn't realize it was that prayer. Yes. That prayer, because the Bible says the prayers of a righteous man prevail much. Wow. She prayed for me. Mm -hmm. There were other people that prayed for me, but it was mm -hmm. just that one lady mm -hmm. that continuously prayed for me everywhere I went. She was right there. Wow, that's awesome. That's letting you know, don't give up on your ch children. Don't give up on your loved ones. Even though the situation may look, look hopeless, it may look bleak, but, you know, God is still God. He can do anything but fail. So, you know, we just want you to be encouraged and um, and, and, and just um, listen to, let them listen to this testimony. That, that, you know, it will bless them and it will bless you as well. Because uh, Teresa came a long ways. And I tell you, God, is he's no respect of persons. If he's done it for her, he'll do it for you yes. as well. So don't give up on your prayers. Believe what you're praying for your loved ones. Know that God is faithful. Even though sometimes, you know, the enemy trying to make it look like he's not faithful, but he is. He's yet still there. He's listening. He's, he's waiting for your prayers. So... Continue to believe what you're praying and know that God will do just what he said he will do. He, his ears are open to the cry of the righteous. So continue, you know, to uh, bombard he heaven on behalf of your, your loved ones and believe God for the change. And you just have to, you know, just, just believe God. I tell you, faith is, is just a grain of a mustard seed. And once we plant that seed, I'm telling you, it will sprout, it will spring up, it will grow. So don't think that your prayers are small. Even though, you know, when Daniel prayed, he prayed the first day. You know, the Prince of Persia held up the prayers, you know, and God himself, you know, he, he intervened. And he, he told Daniel, he heard him the first day. 
but sometimes it comes, the principality is fighting. It's a, it's a warfare that's going on, but know that you win. You have, you win every time. So don't uh, stop praying, don't stop believing. I don't care what you say, what it looks like, because the enemy will paint you a picture. Mm -hmm. And the picture he paints, it, it's not gonna look good. But nevertheless, you know, it comes a time you have to tell yourself, I believe God, mm -hmm. God, I trust you. So, you know, even with that being said, you know, tell us also about um, the time that your children were taken. By they, CPS. Yes, they mm -hmm. actually didn't get taken, mm -hmm. but everything that looked bad, it's not always bad. It's some good mm -hmm. out of the bad. Mm -hmm. And I thank God today for CPS yes. coming into my life. I thank God mm -hmm. for my son being born addicted to crack, because if he yes. wasn't born addicted to crack, CPS wouldn't have got in my life. Yes. And I wouldn't have had the keys. Yes. To get to the right, get on the right path. You know, mm -hmm. I was connected with Narcotics Anonymous. Yes. I was connected with different uh, organizations that can help and guide me, you know, in the right path. Yes. Even when I didn't want to go, even when I didn't want to go uh, to NA mm -hmm. or I would be there, I couldn't hear for listening, you know, or mm -hmm. see for looking. But when that time came, I knew which way to go. I knew yes. which which road to walk down. And it's funny that you was talking about, you know, just believing mm -hmm. despite of what it looked like. Yes. You know, it was a time when CPS would always say, Teresa, um, we need to take a drug test. I would always tell them, oh, I'm clean. I ain't smoke crack. I ain't got high in a month. I ain't got high in 60 days. Yes. I did not realize I was calling those things, which be not as though they are, mm -hmm. what the Bible say. Yes. Because if I wouldn't, I probably wouldn't be clean today. Yes. So, you know, you got to just continue to speak it over your life. Yes. And that's, you know, it comes a time we have to intervene on behalf of our loved ones and uh, step in and, and speak the word of God over mm -hmm. it. We have, you know, different weapons that we can use in order to intervene uh, on behalf of our children, our loved ones. Uh, we have the word of God stating, you know, that... Uh, Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but uh, the Lord delivers out of them all. They're going to have some afflictions. They're going to go through th some things. But know that, you know, that affliction is only for a moment. So don't get discouraged about that. We also have the name of Jesus in which we can call on the name of Jesus. I mean, Jehovah Rapha, you know, he's the Lord, our healer. You know, uh, Je Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah uh El Shaddai. I mean, you just call on his name and he can be whomever you need him to be. He can be just that. We also have the blood of Jesus to where we can apply the blood, asking the Lord to saturate us in his blood to where we can, um, his blood itself, you know, it never loses its power. So use the blood and apply those things to the, the prayer that you're praying, apply them to your everyday living to where, you know, you can, you will come out victorious if you just trust and believe what, what you're saying, what you're praying about and what you're presenting to the Lord. Because he said, a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Let not that man think that he should receive anything of the Lord. So don't be double-minded when you're praying concerning your loved one. Just trust and believe that the prayers that you're praying, God will perform it. We, he said, call me into remembrance. So you call him into remembrance with his word. So uh, once we call him into remembrance, He'll honor his word, and he will perform it. So just allow him to demonstrate himself and show himself strong on your behalf. So um, tell us uh, about your stage play. I Am Beautiful mm -hmm. is the name of the play. And it was about my life story as well. Yes. And during the play, I didn't realize that I had low self-esteem. Okay. A person on drugs, they have low self-esteem. Um, when you um, doing anything to please man or to please whoever, you have low self-esteem. Mm -hmm. When you're sitting around and you're depressed and you're weary and worried about everything, you have low self-esteem. And I didn't realize that I had it. I, I did not know, I did not know that I had low self-esteem. And low self-esteem was a generational curse. My dad had it, my mom had it, yes. and 
it came over into me. There was a time in my life I would do anything to get this man. Oh, I know what to do to get him. Oh, I can go and get him some money when I get paid and do everything what he liked and what was worth for him, but did not know what was worthy for me. The same way with drugs. Yes. I did anything that I was worthy of to get my dope, but didn't mm. know what to do that was to do better for me. You know, I didn't yes. know that, but now I don't have low self-esteem. I'm mm -hmm. delivered from low self-esteem. Yes, I'm delivered from people yes. because Galatians 1 and 10 say you're going to either pursue God or pursue man. You can't be a God pleaser and a people pleaser. I learned that being addicted to people is just as worse as being addicted to drugs. You know, um, yes. I learned how, what I wanted in life. I mean, I thought that a dollar was too much to spend on me. Now I know my self-worth. Yes. I know my value. You know, mm -hmm. I know what I like to do for fun. I know what I like to go out and eat. Mm -hmm. I know how, what's, what I'm worthy of. I didn't know that at first because I was too busy worried about everybody else. There'll be people like, well, so-and-so, so-and-so going to think this about you and people going to be saying this. Now, I don't care what nobody said about me. <laughs> oh, well, I don't care what your title is because if I'm a follower of Christ, I'm yes. going to do what he, I want to be like him. Yes. He didn't care about no titles. Yes. You know, and that's where I am with that now. Yes, that's wonderful. I can just, you know, see, you know, um, how God is really blessing you and, um, I want you to tell us about this award that you won, this beautiful award. The Church Stars Awards, 2019 Church Stars Awards. Mm -hmm. This is my, I Am Beautiful was my very first stage play. And it, it was in Arizona, Phoenix, Arizona. Yes. And when they called my name and told me I won the award for the wow. producer of the year, I broke down and I cried because mm -hmm. it was like, God is just really opening up doors. and. People always said, I, like I said, I wasn't going to never be nothing, never amount to nothing, or I was going to always be like my dad, or, you know, nothing was going to happen. But God is a God that he will show you. And then yes. by this stage play, me winning the award of the year out for my very first play, God is showing me that this play is going to be a national play. It's not yes. just local in my area, yes. because the world needs to know what we overcame. You know, you grow up and I was mm -hmm. hearing mm -hmm. whatever goes on in this house stays in this house. Don't yes. keep it. Don't tell nobody nothing. No, I'm telling. I'm not ashamed. Yes. So the war didn't come from me, didn't come from me. It was a God. It was a God thing. Yes. I tell you, because this play, I mean, you laugh, you cry, you, you, I mean, it, it just really, you know, blesses you and, and, and see where, you know, God um, can bring an individual from and take them to. So uh, even they also had a song, you know, that was written entitled, I Am Beautiful. Yes. The singer, is my friend, my sister, Karen Crombie, she sung the song wow. and it was awesome. Wow, I tell you, it was, you know, the audience were just, was just, you know, like encore, encore, more, more. They just wanted more. <laughs> <laughs> and I tell you, it was so down to earth. And uh, Teresa, she, you know, made you feel welcome. She got on the stage and she was just, you know, just so relaxed and just so into it. The music, you know, that was uh, played and the lighting, everything was just wonderful. And um, just to uh, experience um, the play I Am Beautiful, you you have no idea how, how much it will bless you. So um, we just want you all to be encouraged about your loved ones, those that's, you know, dealing, like I say, with addiction of any sort. It can be, you know, a variety of addictions. It don't just have to be drugs, alcohol. Uh, it can be sexual addiction. It can be pornography. It can be, you know, a number of things. But we want you to know that there is, you know, hope. You know, after all of this, it's, it's still hope. And even in the midst of it, sometimes when we're going through it, don't seem like, you know, there's a future for the individual. But there is. So. Uh, keep standing in the gap, keep praying, keep believing God, and watch God work. So we just want to uh, say a prayer for those that's uh, dealing with addiction. Would you like to say a prayer for them? Sure. Okay. Father God, we just come before you right now, God. 
thanking you for everything that you've done and everything you're doing. Father God, we ask that you touch each and every one throughout the universe, God, in the world that is suffering from any kind of addiction, whether it be sexual addiction addiction, Lord, whether it be drug addiction, cigarette addiction, club addiction, people addiction, whatever it is, God, Lord, we ask that you bind, rebuke, and crush, smash it right now in the name of Jesus. No weapon formed against your people cannot, shall not, will not prosper. And God, we ask that you just continue to protect them, deliver them, because you said we're overcomers by the word of our testimonies. And God, we ask that you raise them up to be a testimony, Lord, to where you can get the glory and we yes. thank you God and we claim it done right now yes, in, Jesus name. in Jesus amen. name amen. amen amen so if you would like to uh, uh, if this broadcast has been a blessing to you and you would like to sow into this ministry uh, please uh, stay tuned and look at the broadcast uh, the contact information will appear at the end uh, if you would like um, to uh, order a, one of uh, evangelist Teresa Tarpley's books or one of her DVDs, please uh, stay tuned for the um, in contact information at the on the screen after the broadcast has ended. And thank you for tuning in. And may you have a wonderful day. Uh, tell us about any uh, upcoming future uh, endeavors that you have. What we're working on is taking a, a stage play, I'm Beautiful, on the road. And I have another book that's about to be released. This called Why Y'all Treat Me So Bad. And um, it's, it should be released really soon. Yes. And then I'm almost finished with the third book, The Mother of Inmates. So wow. that should be coming soon. Wow. I tell you, she inspires me. <laughs> <laughs> she, uh, Evangelist Teresa, she's always on the movie. I mean, she's she's not stagnant. She and and, and plus she works and uh, she gives quality service, you know, in everything she does. So um, I just appreciate you, you know, coming and sharing your testimony and sharing your stage play and your book with us. And you know, don't forget to tune into our radio broadcast. Um, this lady is on the move. So. Uh, Please, you know, by all means, um, share this uh, broadcast with someone else and let them be blessed as well. Thank you.